Well, I remember his first lecture. Say, even. I remember Linus Pauling's first lecture. Yeah, okay, I remember Linus Pauling. Because two reasons. One, his lectures were fantastic, and he would answer any question, and he recognized something in me. He invited me, he, he was, he took my questions very seriously, and he invited me to his home on several occasions, you know, which was the only, he was the only professor that ever did that. Uh, I remember his first lecture. To me, it was spectacular. So here's how it went. In chemistry classes at MIT or Caltech, uh, they would have a lecture hall that had a bench where you could put things on and place to connect your Bunsen burner and stuff up like that. Okay. So Linus Pauling is giving his first lecture in chemistry. And he had all these bottles with labels on them. And he said, he's asking the question, how can a person tell what a chemical is? So he says, well, okay, uh, you can, you have some organs of smell and taste. So he sees a bottle that says NH4 or something, you know, that's ammonia. And uh, he opens the lid and sniffs and says, ah, that's ammonia. I can tell because it smells terrible, you know. And then he's telling how you tell. So he sees a bottle that says acid and he gets some on his finger and tastes it. He says it's sour. And it turns out all the acids are sour. Sour is a property. And he's going around, and you know. And I and everyone else is just, you know, we're just this is showmanship or something, you know, we're winning. And as he's going around, there's a bottle that says HF, which is, uh, you know, I know, I think it was, is it HF? I think so. Anyway, it was the deadliest simple poison in the world. Now, the deadliest poison is something called, uh, I forget, it's like a very complicated biological thing, a few molecules will kill you, okay? And this one is a very simple chemical. It took a microscopic amount, but more than the others. So this was the most potent, uh, sodium fluoride is what it was. Sodium chloride, uh, chlorine and fluorine are both similar. Sodium is salt, sodium chloride is salt, I mean. Sodium fluoride is the deadly poison. Okay. Okay. So he's going around, you know, explaining how you can tell. Well, you can smell it. So he smells it. Ammonia stinks, you know. And so he says some are slippery. The all the bases are slippery. When you go like that, you feel it's slippery, while others are not. And then he says, and you can taste it, you know. And he's going around and he shakes his bottle and he has a glass stopper and it puts a drop on his tongue. And when he gets to the hydrogen uh, fluoride, uh, it's the most potent non-complex poison known to man. And I and about 20 other students in this group who knew something about chemistry all jumped up and said, don't do it, don't, you know, because the smallest drop, you die. And he says, yes, there is a problem with this method. <laughs> and he puts the stopper back in the bottle. And so he, he was just the most fantastic lecturer. And also, at, at the end of each lecture, he would stay around and you could go up and ask him questions. And he would answer. So one day I'm up, up there in line to ask him my question. All I wanted to do was find out what's a superconductor at the high, I was interested in superconductors and I thought, if you got some superconductor at a high enough temperature, you could do all kinds of things. The big thing they do with it is build things like CERN, 
which need superconductors at the highest known temperatures. And they have them now much better than they used to. But in those days, they were very rare. So uh, I went up to ask him that question. I remember there was a student in front of me asking a question. And his question was, what are beetles' wings made out of? Yes. OK. So I thought, you know, this is a nut. In any case, but Pauling took everything seriously. He says, why are you asking me what beetles' wings? And this guy looks around furtively, you know. And when he thinks no one's listening, he says, well, I saw this big beetle that was flying along, and it flew right into a wall, you know, on a building, a brick wall, you know, and it fell to the ground. So I went over to it to uh, see how it smashed itself up, and uh, guess what it did? It just got up and flew away. So I, I want to know what beetle's wings are made out of, and Minus Pauling said, well, why do you want to know? And this kid says, he gets, he's secretive again. He says, well, if we made airplanes out of the same stuff, the airplane could fly into a mountain and then just get up and fly away, you know, just like a beetle did. And so Linus Pauling starts to lecture him and momentum and energy being related to the square of the speed. And so, you know, the beetle hits the wall at five miles an hour and the airplane hits the wall at, you know, 100 miles an hour. And you square the speeds to get the energy. Five squared is 25 and 100 squared is 10,000, which is a lot bigger. And so, and so on and so forth. So then Pauling notices that this student doesn't care about his explanation. He just wants to know what beetles' wings are made out of because he has this dream. So Pauling says, well, okay, I'll tell you. And then he goes into this detail, and he's describing a very complicated molecule, a protein molecule, which is what a beetle's wing is. And he said there's a very interesting thing. In every beetle, the molecule in the right wing is a spiral molecule. And in the left wing, it's a spiral in the other direction. They're left-handed and right-handed. And the molecular structure of the beetle's wing is different for the left wing and the right wing. And I thought, how does this guy know all these things? You know, I, so well, then I, I asked my question. I said, what's a superconductor at the highest known temperature? And he told me something 18 Kelvin. Now they have much higher. Okay, so I go home, and I'd never heard of what he told me. So I'm, uh, we had an Encyclopedia Britannica. I, I, I lived off campus and shared a, uh, this woman, an old woman, had a home off campus, and she rented rooms to students. And she always talked about a friend of hers who would come to visit, she said, once in a while, named Freddie. She kept talking about Freddie. I thought she was nuts or something. Okay. So, um, so anyway, so what, what happened is uh, I'm trying to think. He mentioned the name, and I can't find it. So I had the book. I looked it up. It wasn't in it. I thought, what's going on? So I found they had an Encyclopedia Britannica, and when I looked in it, it said, this is a seldom used name for this following element. And I thought, Jesus Christ, here's this guy, a professor of physics, you know, and he's using this obscure, seldom used name. I thought, well, he's pretty smart, but, you know, must be dumb in this respect. Okay. So then I start reading the newspaper, and there in the front page is his picture where it said, Linus Pauling returned from London yesterday, where as chairman of the International Committee on the Naming of the Elements, the element called Columbium would henceforth be known by this other name. And that was the one <laughs> in the name he just said. And this was typical of him. 
he would just say with a straight face this new name, even though he was the one that just picked it for the name in London, and he was just back the day before. 